Well, hopefully that intro's uh, piqued your interest. Um, it certainly did mine when I first found out about these plasma cannons. Keep watching and you'll see what kind of interesting concepts I came up with. And um, before we do that, hit the button right here and subscribe. So one of the challenges I was faced with was, do I make a plasma cannon or a bottle shooter? And I solved that problem, I made both. So here's the top end of a uh, plasma cannon, if you will. And then here's the top end of a bottle shooter. I don't know what else to call it. It's not a bottle rocket, although we're gonna make some in the future. And what I ended up doing is I took a, a platform that was uh, decommissioned and capable of doing anything and I actually put the Benzomatic device and mounted it in there um, basically by drilling uh, some half inch holes and attaching it in there with, uh, with a tie wrap. Now, the way this works, if I uh, want to shoot my plasma cannon, it basically drops right in and clips in. So that's kind of neat, I thought. Of course, you attach the hose, and once you do that, you put your bottle on, and you're ready to shoot. Now, if you want to switch over to shooting bottles, we just unclip this. Take this assembly off. And put the bottle shooter on. Same concept. Clip it in. So the first one that I built was the uh, plasma cannon and I actually built it in a way that you could, for lack of a better word, switch uh, barrels. This is a fairly large one. This is an even larger one. I think you get different effects depending on the size of these things. So I figured I'd make it a modular in a sense, even more modular than the drop in piece. And um, I'm actually going to get a smaller bottle and um, either tonight or tomorrow night we're going to do some nice shots outside which should be really interesting. It'll be a lot of fun. So here's for the first one. Uh, here's the steps I took to build it. And um, once we're done we'll come back and uh, go on to the next one. Alright so at this point what I'm going to do is uh, weld the combustion chamber and the output barrel which is kind of soft but I think it'll still do. Uh, I'm going to do it in such a way though that we can get this cap in here and change outputs. To do that, we're going to have to Dremel this out and uh, then use some hot glue to get it together. So let's start with that. And what I'm going to do is uh, put the larger cap on this bottle. I've got my uh, trusty Dremel tool and we're going to Dremel this out until this cap fits in there. So let's do that. Perfect. Now I'm going to shake out all the crap. Then I'm going to put a nice fat layer of hot glue on the inside. And hopefully that will harden up and help hold that bottle cap in there. And then put some uh, around the bottle cap itself. Now we're going to let that sit and cool because one of the things I want to be, be able to do is make sure that I can unscrew which I can. Now what I need to do is drill a hole inside of here. I'm going to let this hot glue finish up um, getting cold and solidifying and then I'll drill a uh, 5 8 hole in here just on the inside of that cap and we'll be able to change barrels. Alright, the last thing I'm going to do is on the combustion chamber I'm going to use a Forstner bit and drill it to 5.8 so that the 5.8 hose can go in there. Alright, 5.8 hole, the hose should slide in there snugly. We'll hot glue it in when we're done. Alright, so I've spent a bunch of time making wooden prototypes that quite frankly just kind of fell apart and I got one that fit. I actually have these bar cutting boards. Um, I bought a three pack for another project and I'll probably end up doing a video on that eventually. So I'm going to make one. I'm going to make the mount out of these uh, 
All right, so we've got this marked off. Um, take it to the bandsaw, cut the uh, pieces that need to be cut out, and we'll see if it fits. If it does correctly, we'll go forward. If it doesn't, we'll shape it a little more um, before I start doing any uh, any holes for the uh, tubing that we're going to end up wrapping around this thing. So this cutting board turned out to be a good idea. I've actually got this so that it sits right in there. Um, all I got to do now is really map out what uh, the rest of the cutting board is going to look like uh, when I get through to, through with it so that we can mount this to it. And um, we're good to go. The, the reason I'm doing this is I want to make a couple of different um, cannons. Uh, one of them, of course, is this one. It's going to you know, basically just shoot a fireball. And uh, I want to make another one that shoots um, bottles, empty bottles. And uh, I want to be able to just modularly just clip on whatever gun I'm going to use. So you'll see how this works. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started with the rest of it. All right, we're making progress. I got the holes cut for the tubing. And uh, man, that was just a lot of uh, work and effort, but I got the prototypes done in wood and figured out they really weren't strong enough. So this cutting board material is gonna be uh, just perfect. Next thing we're gonna do is uh, figure out where it's gonna be mounted. Uh, put that on the band saw and uh, keep moving. Well, I've got it cut out and uh, it looks to be a pretty decent fit. Let me give you a close up here. Not terrible. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of this profile. I'm going to do two of these. And uh, that way I'll have a, a modular system for depending on what I want to do with the uh, cannon or bottle shooter, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to go ahead and get that done. So after going through a couple of different prototypes, believe it or not, I was able to knock out one in about eh, less than 15 minutes. I also took uh, advantage of the time to uh, paint the first one a flat black, keeping in the spirit of the uh, of the build. Uh, it's not dry yet, so I'm going to hang it up to dry. Once it's dry, we'll go ahead and uh, finish the build. All right, so it's dry enough to work with. Um, <clears throat> one of the first things I want to do is drill some holes for the retainer pins. So we're going to slip, slip this right in here and um, basically use the guides, the pinholes that are already in here as a guide. And what this does, whichever module we decide to use and play with that day, just push those pins in there and now that's become a solid part of this whole assembly, whatever it is you want to call this assembly. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attach this and the way I'm going to do that is with a uh, tie wraps. All right, so I'm getting ready to run the tubing and nice and flexible. One of the things I did to help make this more manageable, uh, because this gets quite rigid, especially now in the winter, and it's kind of cold in the, in the workshop, is I stuck it in the oven at 170 degrees. It doesn't burn, can stay there for hours. So that's just going to make it easier. Um, what I'm going to do is start wrapping it. And the first thing I'm going to do is poke it in the rear. Once we get this in here and we get everything uh, coiled up, what we'll do, actually there's something to be said for having some of it stiff at least, is uh, hot glue that in there.
I'm not getting quite the number of loops I thought I would get, but we'll do one more. And this one's actually going to come back around into the nozzle. All right, so we don't have kinks. This thing's actually ready to fire. All right, so we finished the build on the cannon, the plasma cannon, but now we're going to do a build on the plasma gun. Um, hopefully, we can get these both into the same video. If not, we'll split it up and make two videos out of it, but uh, this should be a lot of fun. Anyway, here I go. If you remember, I had made a uh, second mounting block. So the next thing we're going to do is actually mount a piece of PVC on this. Um, this might not be the ultimate length, but we'll go ahead and get that mounted. And we're going to run an initial length of half inch ID uh, tubing around it. So the way this is going to work is there's two pieces of PVC involved and that one's actually CPVC. This is going to get mounted uh, to the mountain block. Then another PVC is going to slide in here. It's going to get glued and um, we'll start running the coils around that. Now I don't know if this is going to be the ultimate length of this or not. I'm probably going to cut it down in here. And then use the other piece uh, with probably eight to ten inches sticking out to mount the bottle bottle on. So yeah, this is a little warped. Um, I'll go get the half inch ID or 5 8 OD hose now and um, I'm going to try a preliminary wrap. I think I'm going to go every other one. Got the hose. Now the hose is going to be inserted into the back of this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just start to run. So I'm going to run a loop through every other one. trying to get them all the same size just to, for effect more than anything else I guess all right we're gonna leave that just like that for right now so we've got four coils I'm probably gonna got five out of it but that's all right so I went through a couple of iterations of this and I'm not quite happy with the way it turned out so for one we're gonna cut this short Sure. All right, and we're going to hot glue this right in here, but we're going to do something a little different. We're going to put a bottle cap on here as a rest. So I'm letting the hot glue heat up, and I'll be back in a few minutes to finish this up. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm going to Dremel out the inside of this bottle cap, and you're probably wondering why I'm doing this, and I'll show you in a minute. And that's perfect. And the reason I'm going to do this, when I hot glue this all together, this cap's going to get hot glued onto here and it'll help hold the bottle loosely because I don't want the damn thing to explode <laughs> at the end of the gun. And I'll show you what that looks like. So let me get the hot glue going. We'll let that set and then uh, I'll show you how this is going to work. The little bottle cap holder that I put in there didn't quite work out, so I'm going to make another one out of PVC. Let me show you how I'm going to do that. First, I'm going to cut a slit right about halfway through this. I'm going to I'm going to take my gloves, my heat gun, and I'm going to heat the heck out of it. And this will get soft enough to mold. Put the heat gun down. Let's see if it's soft enough. And it is. Or maybe it might need a little bit more heat. 
So basically what I'm going to do is mold it on there and then just hold it down till it cools off. Now I've already got one made while well, this is cooling off. I'll show you this one. And uh, I'll show you how that was made, but this does hold it on pretty good. This one's nice and cool. So now, let's use the glue gun and uh, mount this thing on. Once it cools down, it should hold any bottle. It's pretty steady. So a small bottle, which is already partially melted, we can put on there. It'll hold it. A bigger bottle, if we're going to shoot a bigger bottle, it'll hold that. All right, so doing those builds is fun, and it's now complete. But this video isn't complete without me putting some shots in of me testing and just having some general fun with those things. So here they are. Alright, I hope you've enjoyed this video, especially the shots where we were uh, popping off bottles and uh, just doing some booms. But if you did like this video, hit share and like, and don't forget to subscribe. Hit this button right here, and thank you for watching.